A64 encoding was designed to transmit something that is binary in nature, let's say an object file or something that is not text, to transform them into a set of ASCII characters that can be sent over a channel that normally transmits text. It is not encryption. It is not efficient. In fact, a small thing uh, can become a much larger, it also usually becomes a much, much larger when you encode it uh, six, uh, with uh, Base64. But it's a way of safely transmitting binary over an ASCII channel because both ends know how to decode and encode Base64. However, if you as a SOC operator are looking at a payload and you see a bunch of ASCII text, it's a way of obfuscating something, it's a way of hiding something from you to understand what you are doing. Let's say that you, if you were to see, like we have shown in the previous example, something downloading from a, a Power, a PowerShell Mafia, a particular executable and you know running this and oh that, that really calls your attention but if you see a bunch of ASCII stream that's obfuscating uh, for you. Now if we were capable of detecting that somebody not only is using PowerShell but is actually obfuscating the PowerShell by doing a base64 encoding of it that is something malicious because why PowerShell is a, is a ASCII by nature. There's no there's no reason why anyone will do encoding for that. If you do it, it's something that is bad, and that is what this use case is all about. If you watch the installation videos that are part of this series, you probably remember that one of the things that Mutas wrote besides the rules is actually an AQL function that does. Base 64 decoding. Let's actually test that function as we did when we install it. And in case that you haven't watched the video, you will clearly understand the obfuscation of that uh, that uh, Base 64 can bring, and you will clearly see why the bad guys uh, use it quite often. So. Here in the log activity, I selected advanced search and I'm gonna, you know, use the look ahead and I'm looking for base64 and I'm gonna use the decoder, that's the extension that Mutas wrote. And actually, I'm gonna put the, the whole syntax and then I will insert here. And what I'm going to put in here is the actual, I'm going to paste an encoded file. As you see here, that's, I, I, you cannot really make sense out of what, what, what is it that this is telling you. If you see this in a payload, you will not understand what it is. However, if you get the, the AQL function to work for you on it, you'll see that, okay, this is downloading a file, call the DC, hmm. You know, and starting a process from a temp file. This is the type of things that we've been uh, detecting. But encoded, it will be impossible to be detected except for tools like Curator, as we're going to be showing next. Just to set up our system, we have uh, Curator with no offenses here. Let's put. Uh, the search for only events that fire when are triggered when a rule fire. So Curator is ready to detect the things. Here we're gonna prepare the exploit and have the trap set ready. And here we have the Windows 7 machine. So what I have here highlighted in blue is a PowerShell that is actually being encoded. 
basically by using you know this type of command I take the command and I uh, encode it and it looks something like this so I have that in the clipboard let me actually paste it into the Windows machine let me actually paste it in here is all that string hit enter so when I hit that I get as usual the session that machine has been compromised let's see how much of this was curated by virtue of the sysmon logs that had been that we installed with WinCollect is able uh, to actually detect. So let's go to so not only curator did not miss it and some of the previous rule also fire and we'll see why is because uh, let me stop it here uh, this, this event is uh, particularly telling is because it's detecting PowerShell use it with encoded command and if we go to the offenses tab we actually see an offense that is a combination of all the other things because it was able to decode the actual encoded uh, obfuscated uh, PowerShell if we display the rules that contributed to this offense this is the one that is uh, new we have seen the other ones actually working let's take a look at this one one probably an easier way of looking at this is going to the summary at the end and notice that a couple of things that we have seen before we replace all the carrot all the escapes character in case that there's some attempt to actually <laughs> Uh, encrypt this but we do that after we have decoded with that AQL function that Mutas wrote the PS encoded uh, command and that's a, a custom property that we also define you don't have to worry about how this was done uh, this was actually provided as a zip file for you I also notice that after the, the command has been decoded is looking for matches and is uh, and Mutas cleverly put here different things you know like start process and sap which is actually an alias invoke expression or ex and you know and like that there are several multiple conditions and again you can modify this at, at your own will if you want to extend it into something that is more pertinent to your environment but again this is a nice use case in which we see that not even when people but people obfuscate PowerShell actually if they do that it's gonna look pretty pretty suspicious and curator uh, will detect it <laughs>